Welcome to After the 80 Intra Super Competition. I'm your host, Terry Pascoe. It's grand final week and our teams have been decided and ready to face off. Redcliffe Dolphins up against the fast-finishing East Tigers this Sunday, 3 o'clock at Suncorp Stadium. We have a huge grand final show for you. We'll catch up with Ricky Liana from the Courier Mail, Cameron Cullen from the Redcliffe Dolphins, Shane Newman from the East Tigers and Daniel Swass from the QRL Referee Squad. Joining me on the panel each and every week is Anthony Bomber Breeze. I uh, know John Devine this week. He's offered a junket at the QRL. Uh, they've got their press conferences this morning. Um, but if you'd like to join the discussion, you can follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Just search After the 80 TV. Uh, and you can also download us as a video podcast on iTunes. Now, Intra Super Cup finals have all been completed. Before we take a look at the grand final preview, let's have a look at... Uh, the game on the weekend. Bomber, what are your thoughts? Well, I thought, um, not that it was a bit of a, bit of a shock there. I, th I thought Burley would have got up. They ha had been playing well, and they played well the week before against Redcliffe there, but obviously not getting the job done there. But they went right in the first half there. They seemed a little bit lax in the in the second half there, and the Tigers come home hard and scored three quick tries, which obviously got them the victory in the well, end. Well, I, as you know, I sent you a text message about five minutes before the game, saw Billy Walters had been named to come into the side, and even myself, I was like, oh, he hasn't played in about four weeks, I don't know if he's right. He joked at the QRL Awards that he said, I'll meet you at the grand final, you do all the hard work for us. But, um, I mean, he, he proved to be pivotal. Yeah, no, he he was, he was just one of the stars there. There's Kafusi going over for the first try for... um. East, which got them going, but obviously Burley hit back straight away, didn't they? They certainly did. They come back with this uh, brilliant try as well, and geez, it sparked it. Look had at this. Had to get it down. <laughs> I actually called it. I called it. I called him. Uh, it was out. Yeah, and Sattler my, said no try. There's no way in the world he got that down. <laughs> they certainly did. Even I, that one there. I, I've got question marks about this. I think because Chris Edison, the referee, is, he's oh. on the spot. You, you have to take that he was closer to it than the cameras. What you didn't see before that was Luke Page getting thin binned. Yeah. Um, in, in that, and you wonder if that put a bit of stress on the Burley defence. Yeah, well, obviously being thin binned there, um, he had to come back out. He had to try and redeem himself. He runs hard all the time there, but obviously he uh, got the ball over there, which um, got him um, back into the lead. And like I said, they... They backed it up with a couple of tries, one oh. one after the other there. And Link Port in the corner there does what all good wingers do. That's right. They score tries. But the what we did, obviously have a part, that was in the first 10 minutes of the second half. They scored three tries. That's pretty incredible. Curtis Rowe obviously kicked off a comeback of sorts uh, because you know, East were pulling away. But, um, you know, I think it, it was really down. Uh, after this try, I think it was, Burley scored one more time. It was off the kickoff. And I think... I'm not going to say Joe Whitbread, like, it was an error from him. I think it was just a good defensive tackle from East, dislodging the ball, which then obviously put East over line. So this try here, you know, we all thought um, with the way this was going that uh, Burley were coming home fast and we're going to take it out right on the death. But um, as we'll see very shortly that, yeah, it was just this uh, straight after that, uh, the conversion, uh, it was this run for knock-on. Yeah, well, well, this is the tackle um, you were talking about there. He runs it up there. That's an absolute blinder of all the tackle there and get the ball back there right from the kickoff there. And and that's the and try that probably won him the game. That's right. And how did he get that down? Like, that was remarkable. But this seal, sealed off the, the game. Um, it, it probably just made it a bit more respectable, yeah, uh, the scoreline. But uh, I guess uh, it was too far too soon. Matt White. Uh, called his announced his retirement during the week, and he took out that last conversion as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, he's had a good NRL career as well as back in in the interest there. So that's that's what you do. You give them the last kick to, so they can add it to their resume, don't you? <laughs> that footage was courtesy of the QRL Media. If you'd like to see all the highlights and any views from the weekend, please head to qrl.com.au. Well, it's grand final week, and why don't we kick off with chatting with the Courier Mail's number one rugby league reporter, Ricky Lee Arnold. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me, guys. East over Burley on the weekend. Uh, we all said East were finishing fast, but geez, what a performance on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they've definitely come home really strong, and, and it's great to see, especially after, you know, I think midway through the season, they weren't even really close to the top six. So they've really um, they've come home 
really strong. And, and, you know, that's what we all expected to see, especially with the squad they they had. I know they've had a lot of injuries this year. Melbourne have taken a lot of their players back and forth and, and whatnot. But they've definitely overcome all those hurdles. And I think that's a really good sign ahead of this Sunday as well. You know, they've shown they're a really resilient group. Scott Sipple's done a really good job to get them here. So, um, you know, I think they're really deserving of this as well. I think, you know, last two years they've come close, but not close enough. So good to see them finally there on grand final day. Uh, the the teams have all been released now. What are your thoughts? Any injury concerns for either side? Not that I'm aware of. You know, I think, I think you know, for once we might have a grand final where there's not too much speculation about who's in, who's out. Um, you know, East have even gone far enough to put in Cassiano and and Kafusi and Drinkwater, so a lot of their Melbourne guys that they're in the team. They could still, you never know, they might get back someone like Chase Blair, but I think Scott Sibyl, I spoke to him after the game last week, and he was quite confident it would be the exact same team that, that took on the Bears would run out again on grand final day. As for Redcliffe, you know, they've been pretty consistent the last couple of weeks, it's the same team. They've had a few guys come back from injury over the last month or so, people like Miles Tuali, which has been great to see. And, of course, they've got their Broncos affiliates back as well. Um, Katoni Staggs is a definite inclusion for them, which is, which is a massive boost, uh, especially for their back line. Yeah, well, there was obviously a lot of um, questions if Katoni Staggs would still be able to play. Um, and obviously Sam Cassiano being one of the other ones as well, if he was eligible to play, being that Melbourne is still in there. So, obviously, he is. But um, And also, I just wanted to quickly touch on... Where, Where's the days of just having one to 17? I, I noticed there's a lot, a lot of changing of 17, <laughs> 20, 19. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about that, actually. Last night I was still at work when the teams came in. And the poor lady who had to put all the team lists in the paper was sitting there and she's doing 16 slash 8. And, <laughs> and I think there's a 14 slash 11. Yeah, they, they, you know, I think they all just have their jersey numbers. They kind of stick to them. It's not the NRL. There aren't multiple sizes available and, and different numbers each week. But especially Sam Cassiano, you know, a big boy like that needs a number 20, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, <laughs> It is interesting. Yeah, no. Uh, look, Sorry, you go. And, uh, and I, I also wanted to ask you is um, there's been calls that we sh the QRL should be expanding to an eight Top, top eight system like the NRL and obviously New South Wales Cup as well. What, what do you think? I mean, we've got, what, 14 teams in the competition. Do you reckon it should be expanded out to a top eight? Uh, yeah, that is a tricky one because, as you said, we have 14 teams, but would be more than half of the competition would then qualify for the finals. But, you know, I guess when you look at... Look at, um, look at the teams that missed out, it was the Hunters and they had a very good run and then North missed out as well, if we're looking at 7th and 8th, and, and North were very strong at the start of the year. The Hunters missed out with more wins than losses. So I, I do see the benefit in that, but I just, I'm not sure whether it would make sense having more than half the competition qualifying for finals when, for example, the Devils did have more losses than wins and also had a negative for and against. So it's an interesting concept, but it might not be one that the QRL are able to pull off until maybe the competition as a whole can expand. And I guess we don't really know when that yeah. is either. But um, yeah, I just think I, I, I'm personally a fan of the top six system um, as it is. I think it's good that teams like Burley and, and Redcliffe, you know, get those second chances. Burley had two chances to make it, and and East still prevailed. So there's there's good stories in it and it, it, there is a chance for everyone you know East have played every single week knockout finals the whole time and they've still come through as you know the grand final side so I think it I think it opens it up for anyone to take it when they want it all right now Ricky Lee, we saw your article today about Billy Walters and taking the early guilty plea uh, for his dangerous throw tackle what else can we see in the Courier Mail in the coming days um, I'm going out to uh, see uh, the two captains today, Cameron Cullen and um, Jake Foster. So hopefully have some stories with them over the coming days. And I'm also looking to do an interview with, um, you know, one of East's favourite players, uh, Tommy Butterfield. So that might one might be held over for game day. So make sure you pick up the paper on Sunday. Yeah, this, he's played both for Redcliffe and East and he's lost two grand finals <laughs> with both sides. So, geez, uh, I don't know if that's an omen or anything, but... <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I hope for Tommy. He's a great bloke, and I hope he does get away. And that's coming from a Reckless supporter. So, 
All right, Ricky Lee. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for your time and obviously for your time throughout the season as well. It's been much appreciated. No worries, guys. Thank you very much for having me as always. Ricky Lee Arnold there from the Courier Mail. Make sure you grab your latest edition to keep up to date with all the latest rugby league news. Now, East Tigers have been on some run of form in recent weeks, winning seven of their last eight games. East uh, club captain and centre for the Tigers, Shane Newman, joins us now. Mate, thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Mate, tough but convincing win against Burley on the weekend. Yeah, definitely. The uh, first half was a little bit rough and probably started off really well, but you know, towards the, the end of the first half, we're probably sitting in a position we really didn't want to, then being up by, by a try. Mate, yeah, Billy Walters just got cleared uh, overnight to play, taking the early guilty plea. Was there a little bit of concern uh, in the team? Oh, when, when anyone, whenever anyone ever goes to judiciary, it's always a concern, but um, I suppose lucky for us, he's all cleared to be selected. Um, like Terry said, you've won seven out of your last eight games. What can you put the um, winning formula down to? Yeah, I think at the start of the year, or well, probably the first half of the year, we were really, uh, we used a lot of players. Um, we had a few injuries. I mean, myself, I was out for the for majority of the first half of the year with my, my elbow that I did in round one. Um, but I think a little bit of cohesion, um, consistency of players. Yeah, the, the second half of the year, we probably just had that consistency, which as it shows with our wins. Mate, and obviously there was a lot of questions about your, your coach, Scott Sipple, but I guess what a lot of people didn't see was, like you said, at the start of the year there was a lot of injuries. Uh, you know, your halves pairings were swapping and changing depending on what the Melbourne Storm were doing. But I guess you've got a pretty dynamite spine, even with those changes. I mean, you know, you lose Billy Walters, you've got Josh Ralph. You lose yep. Croft, you've got Torpy. And Torpy and Ralph have been in the BRL and been doing marvellous things in that competition. I guess, uh, does it, do you have to adjust your game plan too much depending on what your spine is? Um, I think, you know, everyone really talks about, you know, feeder clubs and how good it is to have those players. But, you know, you have to remember that they only train with us once a week. So building those, uh, those connections and that, that can be hard sometimes. So if it's, you know, someone like Crossy is an amazing player as he is. If he's with us one week and then two weeks he's not with us and then he comes back, um, you know, sometimes that cohesion is, is challenging. And, you know, Torpy and Ralphie train with us every single night and every, every week. So it's easy for them to slot in because that's where they train during the week. You go up against another talented back line in the competition. Um, how do you, you guys prepare for a team like Redcliffe that got stars out wide, stars in in the halves? Yeah, I think they're, they've definitely been the benchmark team all year. Um, and I think like most, most teams like, like Redcliffe, it's one of those games which is going to be one in the middle. So if our middle do their job um, and give us time um, against their backs when they are you know, shifting it, I mean, especially for my job, when, when our front rowers are, are winning the ruck, it makes my job a lot easier in defence, that's for sure. Mate, I guess that's, that's probably going to be the biggest key. We, we talk about how great both sides um, have got a, a tremendous spine. Uh, but, you know, you've got... Defence is going to be the huge, the biggest thing here. It's going to be really one in the middle because whoever sets that platform, whoever wins the middle, is who's going to really have the great attack. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what every single team plays for. When you're, whether it's in the Intra Super Cup or in the NRL, every team plays for winning that ruck through the middle. So your outside backs have a little bit more time. Defence is on the back foot because you don't have that, and the defence is set. It's easy for them to to make a read and you know get in your face really. Mate, I also want to ask about your preparation leading into Sunday at 3 o'clock. Uh, you know, you've got a different preparation to Redcliffe. Yeah, they had the week off, played Burley, another week off. You guys have had knockout semis every week. Give us an insight into the preparation this week you guys go through. Yeah, I think it's... Um, I, I suppose you can take pros and cons out of both. You know, Redcliffe had one game in the last few weeks, so they can be considered fresh. But, you know, we've, we're sort of building that momentum. So... But then again, yeah, we played some pretty big and, and tough games. I know I felt pretty sore after the weekend. So I suppose you can take pros and cons out of out of both sides. Um, but for us, it's we're trying to keep things as normal as possible. We're not doing anything differently. We're not, um, you know, going out of our comfort zone um, in terms of the way we prepare. If we keep things as normal as we can, 
um, then hopefully we just keep that consistency coming into Sunday. All right, mate. Well, good luck on the weekend and I uh, hope you enjoy the week. Thank you very much. Go the Tigers. <laughs> A huge thank you there to Shane Newman from the East Tigers for joining the show in a busy week. Now, let's head up to the beautiful peninsula to chat with Reckliff Dolphins skipper Cameron Culler. Mate, thanks for your time. No worries, mate. Mate, you guys earned the week off after a bruising game against Burley. Have you enjoyed having the week off or would you have preferred to play another week? No, I definitely, um, definitely enjoyed the week off, mate. I think... I think uh, we had the week off before that Burley semi-final, and I, and I think it really helped us. Uh, this this time of year, it, it it helped out. Like when you got all those niggly injuries, and and you can come into a game fresh, I think you can really use it to your advantage. I know, I know there's sort of two ways to look at it. Like East, East have had a completely different preparation than us leading in. They've played three um, knockout semi-finals, so you know they've got a bit of momentum going in. But um, yeah, I think I think the week off certainly helped us. We've had a We've had a um, good preparation and, and we'll be ready to go. Um, you played in the winning Burley side in 2016. Does the run into the final series feel differently now at Redcliffe? A, a little bit, mate. Um, I, to be honest, I don't remember. I don't remember the week leading up to that grand final. I was only saying that yesterday to someone. I actually, I think I was a little bit, you know, I know it was only two years ago, but a little bit younger. It was my first... <laughs> it was my first um, First grand final at, at, at that level, and I think I, um, yeah, I don't know. I just sort of, Matt, just looked at it different. I think I think I'm I'm really taken in this week this time, and um, I guess I, I know how how hard it is to make a grand final, let alone win one. So I'm really appreciating the week and um, looking forward to the game. Um, East are full of stars, not just Torpy, but you've got Drinkwater, Sevy, Walders. Do you have to alter your game plan now on grand final day to try and nullify some of their brilliance? No, nah, mate, certainly not. Um, I know they're, 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 they've got a lot of good Melbourne boys dropping back. and um, Yeah, they're a strong side all over the park. But we've we've had the same blokes playing all year. And um, I, I think I think we're the, the way we play um, yeah, as a team and, you know, our def defence is obviously the key in big games. And I think defensively, if we get our own defence right, it sort of it doesn't matter who, who you're playing against; it'll, it'll take care of itself. So we'll certainly have a big emphasis on defence, and um, yeah, we're not going to be looking, we're not going to be focusing too much on on their on their single players or any of their stars. It's just focusing on ourselves and our own defence, and um, the rest will sort of take care of itself. I guess defence is going to be a huge key for you blokes, just being how dynamite they can be. That back line. I mean, you guys got your own dynamite back line as well. Like, Trey Fuller coming in at fullback. He's, you know, he, he may as well be playing for the Ipswich Jets, so the style of play he plays. <laughs> and, you know, like, I guess it, you need that strong defensive line. But the other part I want to just talk to you uh, or ask you about is, uh, and we asked Shane Newman this, your preparation this week into a grand final is probably a little bit different to Shane because you're the you know you're the captain of the side. To give us an insight about what you do, you know, you had a week off. Uh, what your preparation's been like? Yeah, it is a little bit different. Um, like I said, I think the the week off really really helps. Um, you 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 can get your chance to get your body right any any way you need. Obviously, we trained on the weekend and um, had a good session together, but. My my preparation personally doesn't change too much to what, to what it would any other week. Obviously, we've got a got a um, fair bit of media stuff. I think me and Shane um, have got some QRL media that we've got to do together today and tick off all of that. And then um, we we both train tonight, and then um, we've got our we've got our captain's run before the game, and that'll be our last sort of preparation before it. But yeah, my 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 job as captain is basically just to make sure. Um, that everyone's cool, calm, and collected, and they they sort of know the opportunity they got in front of us. And we've got a we've got a young team, so um, you know all the boys are very very keen and excited to to play in the grand final. So it's just about um, making sure that they prepare right during the week and um, prepare like they have all year, turn up and, and play like we like we did against Burley last week. And um, yeah, that's that's an important thing, making sure we turn up game day. Yeah, and look at that. I know I've talked about quite a lot that I was concerned about your completion rate, but I think probably what the thing that's been the saving grace for you guys is that your defence has been quite strong. 
Um, and now you've you added into your attacking line, you've got Tony Staggs coming back in, uh, being that the Broncos are now knocked out of the final. So uh, we've seen the team's been released. Uh, are you, you know, you're the captain. Are you happy with this side? Yeah, mate, certainly. Like, and, and like I said, we've we've had we've had a similar side all year. So I guess that's the, the advantage that we have is we've we've we have we've had limited injuries. We've been relatively unchanged for most of the season. I know Trey Trey came in at the back end of the season, but he's sort of strung together probably ten ten really good games. I think he's gotten better every game. But we've 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 basically had the same side, and you add Katoni back in the centres, it gives you that extra little bit of strike out wide, but. Like you said, I think we went we went through a period there where we were very scrappy with our completion rates, and um, we, we we found a way to grind out wins and still still finish the season on the top of the ladder. So, I mean, that's a good quality to have. But certainly, we've worked in the last few weeks. Um, we know we're not going to win a grand final if we're if we're not completing and, and holding on to the footy. So, we've got a big importance on that, and also defensively. All right, mate. Well, thank you very much for your time. You know, you've always been generous with the show. And also, uh, just to mention, we had some baby news last week, but uh, it's the first time you've been on the show since. So I'd like to con- congratulate you and your partner on your, your number two child. Yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's been a, it was great news. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of excitement coming in a grand final, but something like that... Um, you know, it's, it's life changing, and I'm very, we're very excited to, to have number two. Not not till the bit um, due around round one next year. So um, yeah, very exciting. So thanks for that. No worries at all, mate. Well, you have a good grand final. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you to Cameron Cullen, captain of the Redcliffe Dolphins. There. Now, Daniel Swass last year and a few years before that was playing for the Burley Bears Intra Super Cup side. This year, he's jumped the fence and he's joined the QRL referee squad earning himself the middle in the Hastings Steering's under-20s grand final on Sunday. He's joined us now. Dan, thanks for your time. No dramas at all, Terry. Mate, congratulations on the appointment. Mate, you must be super excited about Sunday. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah super shocked when um, I got the call yesterday, but obviously very excited for the opportunity um, to referee the first Hastings Steering's grand final. So, yeah, exciting time. You played in the under twenties grand final a few years ago. Do you approach the game differently as a referee? Obviously on game day. Um, no, the preparation side of things is all is all pretty similar, minus the obvious uh, strapping and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the overall approach is pretty much the same. Mate, uh, tell us about your decision to transition uh, to playing from playing to refereeing. I mean, I know you were a junior referee coming through the ranks, but uh, tell us about wh- why you decided to just jump back into refereeing. Um, yeah, I guess for me it was kind of, uh, I spent those couple of years playing um, in the Intra Super Cup uh, and obviously the MYC as well. And during those times I was sort of in and out of um, the, the top side every week. And um, yeah, I kind of just, it was sort of the beginning of last year, I'd, started to lose my love for footy and um, wondered how, how I could, um, you know, reboot that feeling that uh, for the game that I love so much. And, and for me, that was uh, coming back to refereeing and staying involved um, to, in a capacity where I don't have to beat myself up every week. Your brother Hayden still plays for the Bears. Are you itching to get into the Intra Super Cup just so you can maybe give him 10 in the bin or send him off or...? Yeah, he's, he's still playing. He's playing really well uh, down at Burley. He had a really good year this year. Uh, but for me, um, you know, if I'm fortunate enough to get a to get a cup debut um, in the coming years, then then I'll take that with both hands. And if I'm fortunate enough to get the opportunity to ref him, then obviously, you know, I, I would approach it the same as at any other game, and um, nothing would change really in terms of that. It would just sort of be. You know, obviously bragging rights at home as to who gets the power <laughs> on the field. Do you, do, you, do you get do you get in there a bit more cheeky? Like if he tries to give you a spray, you go, shut up, Hayden. Go on, see ya. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah obviously it, it, it'd be hard with, with the mic, microphones that we wear. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, at home it's sort of, you know, you can kind of get into it a little bit, especially when you're watching the game back and 
you know, if he's giving you a spray, you just give him a spray later when, <laughs> when no one's around to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Now, speaking of your Trust Super Cup, veteran uh, referee Chris Anderson, and, and he's been selected as the head referee, and Liam Kennedy, the assisting, a well-deserved appointment? Yeah, 100%. You know, both those guys have been going really well this year. Um, uh, yeah, they, they both deserve to be there on Grand Final Day, and I'm super stoked for them as well. Does it, having someone like Liam Kennedy uh, come through, I know he's only assistant referee uh, this week, but you know he he was the assistant referee in an NRL game quite a few weeks ago. Does that give you confidence that you know you could be, you know, down the road to a, a NRL uh, spot if it does come up? Yeah, well, well, funny you say that because um, Liam actually refereed our our Colts grand final in 2014, so. Uh, it, it definitely shows that there is definitely a pathway to the NRL through the refereeing ranks um, and through the QRL. So yeah, it's a it's a, it's a confidence booster definitely um, in terms of pathway. All right, Dan. All right. Good luck on the on Grand Final day, mate. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you to Dan Swash from the QRL referee uh, squad for joining the show. Now, there's only one game left this weekend. It's the grand final. But before we have a look at the preview, I just want to take you back and do a bit of a flashback. What yeah. about the talk that uh, the East are the Smokies? Adrian Bell, Scott Sattler have all said that the East Tigers, if they get their game together, they're, they're probably the dark horse to win this competition, are they? I think so. After last weekend, even my, though they only just got over? My, my tip's Redcliffe and East grand final. I oh, think okay. that... Yeah, well, there we are. Look at that. I just snuck it in. Um, no, but just... I just think that it's, you know, it's a good chance of, of happening. I think we're having that amazing back line as well, Scott Drinkwood, I just think. I think you've got some money on East, haven't you? You've dipped them for a while. Look, he's got money on all of them. You Gamble know, got you, you, on all no, no, you can see what's happening. <laughs> they're gonna, you're going to have Cameron Cullen, Adam Moggs, Scott Sipple and that watching the show and they're going to say, Terry's tipped us. <laughs> Get that out of here. Get out of here. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, my advice is anything that Terry Pascoe tips, just put a line to it. I'm going to get him to pick 23 horses come Melbourne Cup, the one he leaves out. <laughs> Congratulations, Terry. What, what, do I, what do I say? <laughs> Took you all season, but you, but you got there. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't jinx, jinx anyone else out. Uh, they're both in there. So do I, I don't know who to tip. It's going to be a tight one. But let's continue on with the, uh, the preview. And we can have a look. It's going to be an interesting clash, Bobber. I, I, I honestly don't realise, no which way it's going to go. There's stories both sides. They always talk about a story in a grand final. You know, you've got Cameron Cullen coming back and it's, you know, you've got that dynamite Broncos back line with the, with the Dolphins, but, you know, you've got Tigers and Braden Torpy and Tom Butterfield. He's played grand finals for Redcliffe at oh. East and lost both of them. Does, is this his year? Well, uh, well uh, like you said, there's, you just don't know which way to go. Like, a lot of people are going to go Dolphins, aren't they? Redcliffe, they're the first team in. Um, they've done everything right. But how can you tip against a side like the Tigers, who are on a on a great roll there, and they're just accounting for everyone that's in front of them? <laughs> they got one to go. Well, that's right. And, I mean, East are in a big run of form at the moment. Like we said earlier with Shane Newman, they've won seven of the last eight games. They've got a dynamite spine. But Redcliffe are that bit fresher. They, they've got a different preparation altogether. They've had... You know, week off, then Burley, then week off. The defence is strong. Our reckless arguably got one of the best defensive games in the comp, and that's what's been winning them games. But oh, I don't know. It's hard to choose. Like, obviously, I have a reckless supporter. I'm going to go reckless, but it's got to be tight. Yeah, well, like I said, defence wins games. And obviously, East last week were probably a little bit down on, on their defence. And like I said, Redcliffe have got one of the best defences. But, but East... Defence has to pick up, like I said, but obviously their their attack doesn't have to pick up. Their attack is on fire. They get the ball out to um, Seve and um, Link Port on, on the wings. They've scored 16 or 15 tries, so obviously they know how to get themselves over the try line. All right, what's your tip? My tip's Redcliffe by seven. Redcliffe by seven? Yeah, they'll get six ahead and a field goal. I'm Cullen. gonna I'm going to be a little bit less. Of that. I'm actually going to say Redcliffe by one. Bryce Donovan field goal in extra time. That's my prediction. Mm-hmm. Put your house on it. <laughs> I haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Or oh, I should mention, sorry, before we continue on, is uh, the under Hastings Steering's under-20s, Norse up against Townsville. 
This is at one o'clock at Suncorp Stadium, so make sure you get down there early to watch that. These Norse and Towns have all been doing, going at each other for the last few years in the juniors coming up through the grades. Well, so. they're the two top top teams in that Hastings Deering all season, so obviously it's going to be a fitting grand final. It's going to be a cracker to begin the day. Yeah. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Huge thank you to Ricky Lee Arnold, Cameron Cullen, Jake Foster, and, oh, sorry, not Jake Foster, I should say it was uh, Shane, Shane Newman, Newman. Uh, Daniel Swass for joining the show. Um, also, a big thank you to you, Bomber, throughout the year. Thank you very much. No worries. It's been good to talk about the Intrust Cup and get everybody on there. And obviously, a thanks to all the guests that have taken time out of their schedule to be part of the show. That's right. And also, John Devine, who, uh, like I said, unfortunately couldn't make it in with us today. I also want to do a shout out to our producer, Nick. Gabby, the director, floor manager, Jamie, questionably if he's a second, first. No, he, he's a great bloke and he, he's a good floor manager. Uh, Ashley, Bruce, Mitch, obviously the staff here, they do a tremendous job. But if you'd like to join the discussion, you can follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Just search after the ADTV. You can also download us as a video podcast on iTunes. I'm Terry Pascoe. We'll see you next week.